today I'm going to teach you how to use the hedge defensive setting on 2K17 correctly so you can shut down all pick and rolls. The possession you see here is a mistake so I can just show you how to do it right. Now make sure you watch tutorial number 11. It is absolutely essential to watch that defensive setting tutorial so you can make everything work and fix all the bugs in 2K17 on defense. So today I'm going to teach you to how to choose the correct hedge defense for the correct matchup. And make sure you subscribe for over 100 2K17 tutorials this year and also subscribe for a chance to play with me in my part. Now shout out to uh, that Michigan fan from OS. All of these slow motion clipper clips <laughs> you see are from him. He dropped them, they show the basic hash defense. So I will show the detail of gameplay but these clips belong to that Michigan fan so shout out to him. So we'll begin by studying handlers who can't shoot and also if you have a slow footed big man as your hedge defender. Now in a situation like that, you want to run the no hedge defense. So you see Markeith Morris is running the lower hedge defense here against Chris Paul and Bay Griffin. What he simply is, he's going to stay back, he doesn't step up. He's going to continue to drop back, stay in Chris Paul's lane, but he's going to keep dropping, keep dropping until Reggie Jackson picks Chris Paul up. Now this is great defense with people who can't shoot, but as you can see, the weakness is that Blake is wide open, so if it's a screener who can pop, this defense is not the way to go, but it will work great against these players getting screens from player, players who can't shoot. Wade, Westbrook, Jeremy Lin, LeBron, DeMar DeRozan is all players I suggest you go uh, no hedge on if they're getting a screen from a screener who absolutely cannot shoot the ball. So you can see here I'm running uh, going under and no hedge defense on Moutier and yep, that's the shot I want him to take all day long. He is kind of forced into taking that because the defense is snuffing everything out except the three point shot. So you can see again, I'm going to go no hedge, under, there you go. Now he hits it but we're paying the percentages to our favor. And we're going to do the same thing to Jeremy Lin. And you can see Greg Monroe, my hedge defender, just drop back, do nothing. I did great on ball, so nothing happened, great no hedge. Now as you can see from those clips though, the key is that I usered on ball every pick and roll. All right, the AI is the one I expect to do the heading. This is the best setup because the AI defender is terrible at avoiding screens if you let them on ball. So don't, use it on ball and use AI hedge defense. Just look at these clips in detail again. You can see me user going under the screen, playing it correctly with my stick skills. I want him to take that. If he makes it fine, but there's no way Moutier is beating me taking that shot all game long. And here you can see me do the under defense perfectly. I avoid the screen, stay in front of Lin, completely shut down and great no hedge by a great Monroe there. And same thing on Moutier. I see the Jokic, I'm gonna go under. I got shoved away. This is a terrible shot for him. It's a moving leg kicking free, so he ain't hitting that. We get the rebound. Great user on ball defense during pick and rolls. Now, but make sure you're aware of your uh, hedge defender's IQ. Because bad hedge defenders are going to make pick and roll defense mistake even if you give them the right settings and I believe that's fair. That's right for right? Because people do NBA players make bad defensive choices. So here you can see Farid about to set a screen on D'Angelo Russell. Great screen here. It forces a switch so D'Angelo has to pick up Farid. They run a pick and roll. D'Angelo does the hedge all wrong. He doesn't recover well. This was soft hedge but you can see D'Angelo completely messes up the entire defensive scheme. He doesn't catch up to the roller enough. Easy basket. So watch out for this. So be more mindful if you have bad pick and roll head defender, you gotta, you know, help them. Now, let's take a look at what happens if we have to deal with uh, the hedge defense with non-shooting handlers with skilled screeners. So by skilled screeners, I mean the screeners that are either really good at rolling or shooting, but not like elite three point shooting, like maybe mid range shooting and also really good at diving to the rim. And you also need a hedge defender that has better foot speed for this. Decent foot speed. So what you want to do is you want to do the catch hedge defense. Tobias Harris is playing the catch hedge here and what he's going to do is as the screen is set and Chris Paul gets around the screen, Tobias Harris is actually going to follow or shadow Chris Paul. But he's not close up right? You see he's still, he has to step back. So kind of like no hedge, he is away from the action. But he's going to shade Chris Paul until Blake Griffin does something. See, Great Griffin pops, Tobias Harris follows him, and he stops the pop. So if Great Griffin seems to uh, happens to roll here, Tobias Harris will also do that. The point is this, is that unless, unlike no hedge, 
This actually allows the hedge defender to defend the screener. Because the other no hedge defense is just completely focused on the ball handler with an unskilled screener. So if you have got a skilled screener who can either roll or pop, catch hedge is a very viable option to shut down both things. Now, these are the screeners that you probably need to set catch hedge to, like Draymond, Blake, Dwight, and DeAndre who are very good at, roll good at rolling, and Al Horford who happens to be very good at both. So here, LeBron James, this is online gameplay. Uh, the user, LeBron, he's using LeBron James and Dwight Howard for a pick and roll. And I have set Anthony Davis to catch hedge. And you can see this being defended perfectly. Great catch hedge defense by Anthony Davis. Now let's watch that in slow motion. You can see uh, Anthony Davis sees the screen. So I go over, but he stays with LeBron, shadows LeBron until Dwight does something. And the moment Dwight rolls, Anthony will play it, the roll immediately. And he tips the pass because he stays between Dwight and the basket and denies the passing lane. Great, great hedge defense. Now, so let's see what we have to do against elite shooting screeners. So think players like Ryan Anderson, Dirk Nowinski, or Steph Curry and James Harden. Remember, people can get screens from guards too if they're elite shooters on ball, right? On ball pick and fade with Steph. So you, what you want to do is you want to do the stay at hatch defense. You can see Tobias Harris here has stay attached on. And what he's going to do is after the screen is set, Tobias is literally going to stay attached to Blake Griffin or the screener. Whoever it is, Tobias Harris is not going to let him go. So this is great if it's an elite shooter. But obviously the problem with this is if the handler is really good and your on-ball defense is not great, you will get beat by the point guard or whoever is getting the screen, right? Because the screen defender or the hedge defender is completely staying close to home on the screener. So you can see here, Beverly is about to run it with uh, James Harden. So this is a guard on guard pick and fade. And when you want to go to the settings and understand this, on the settings, you can actually give the center's defender and other screeners different schemes. You see, on on ball screen and hedge defense for center, I have it on auto, so I haven't said anything. But on on ball screen and hedge for everybody else, so no bracket center, I have it to go over and stay attached. This means any player who screens for another player on the Rockets who doesn't happen to be the center, my defender, my hedge defender is going to stay attached to him. So remember, this was a guard on guard pick and fade between Beverly and Harden. So with those settings, Rubio is guarding Harden right now. He's the hedge defender. He is going to stay attached to Harden during this. And you see, he never left Harden. He never hedged. He never backed up. He just stayed in front of Harden. That's the right defense. Bad on ball by me, but I got good home defense. Defensive settings, <laughs> hope, let's go. So watch, Rubio never leaves Harden. That is the stay attached hedge defense. And it's great against screeners who are elite shooters. Not so much that on ball though, whoops. All right, and here you, uh, we're gonna look at shooting and driving. So handlers, we can do both, so they're elite. And also if you're big, happens to have very nimble feet and agile. So what you want to do against players like that is soft hedge. So Marcus Morris is on soft hedge here. What he's going to do is he's actually going to step up and he's going to meet Chris Paul as this pick and roll is happening. And the moment my on-ball defender recovers on Chris, Marcus Morris will run right back to Blake Griffin as close as possible. That is the soft hedge defense. Now obviously the weakness of this is that if you don't go over quick enough, you can run into Marcus Morris with your own on-ball defender. Or worse, if you don't go over quick enough, Chris Paul is just going to turn the corner on Marcus Morris here. Because he's... Well, Marcus Morris is okay because he's nimble feet and fast. That's why I say you want to go soft hedge with that. If you give soft hedge to someone, let's say, like, really slow-footed, like Roy Hibbert, Chris Paul, if he sees Roy Hibbert step up like that, he's just going to turn on that, right? So you're thinking the elite handlers are like Curry, Lillard, Harden, Chris Paul, CJ McCollum, these guys probably all need to be soft hedged. And the uh, defenders that you can do it with, so the hedge defenders that you could use that a soft hedge would work would probably it would be Anthony Davis, Draymond Green, or someone really long and big but really nimble for the like uh, Rudy Gobert. So obviously I broke down this for you guys already in the previous tutorial, so you can watch tutorial number six for the details, but you can see Joe Kim is also decent at it. You see he soft hedges, shows on CJ, recovers. Locks it down. And another really good soft hedge defender, hedge defender, uh, it's, you know, Christoph Porzinga. So CJ again, who needs to be soft hedge. Look at Porzinga's go, recover. He does it again. Porzinga shows, recover. Great, great, great hedge defense. 
Now, so those are all the ones I'll show you today, but make sure you don't use hard hedge, family. Like I told you this before and I'll show you again. Hard hedge is broken, so it doesn't matter what it does correctly or poorly. Just don't use it because it will just break. So I have hard hedge on Joakim Noah here. Some of you have seen this before. That's bad defense. That's not NBA defense. That's just because hard hedge is broken. So no matter what, make sure you avoid hard hedge at all costs. All right, I won't say it again. <laughs> I'm showing you twice. It's really bad. Don't use it. So thanks for coming by family. I'm just going to give you guys a summary of everything I just talked about today. So make sure you watch the previous tutorial, the defensive settings part 3 or tutorial number 11 where I teach you how to use all the off-ball settings to play really good defense because this is bad defense here. But you need that one because the 2K17 AI help defense is broken, it's got a lot of bugs on rotation. So make sure you watch tutorial number 11 and all of these pick and roll hedge defense schemes, you can consider them the initial step to great defense. You know, this is the tip of the spear, right? If you lock down the pick and roll, you don't need help. But obviously, it's not going to be perfect. You can make user mistakes. And like I showed you earlier, poor AI defenders will make poor AI defender mistakes. But make sure you understand the matchups and what's happening yourself. Like who's the screener, who's the ball handler, and what kind of schemes you need to use. I have shown you all the schemes you need, pretty much. So, just going to choose between catch hedge, no hedge, and uh, soft hedge. Alright? Make those choices yourself and I will be showing you more of these over time. Let me know which duos you want to see defended. I can show it to you. And uh, it's been a really good weekend for defensive tutorials, but I will show you guys more freelance money plays and uh, offensive soon. So as always, thanks for coming by. I will see all of you next time.